Okay, so here they ask us, what is the length of AG? And that's this hypotenuse right here of triangle, or right triangle, excuse me, AFG. This is a classic problem, the wheel of Theodonus, right? Where it's one right triangle built on another. And what you might notice is that they all have something in common. What I notice is the shorter leg is always the same, right? In each of these triangles, what is the shorter leg always equal to? Well, I see that they're all equal to 1, and that's the common thread here. Now, what's so cool with the wheel of Theodonus is, depending on how you start your wheel and what the lengths are and the ratio between them is, it affects how the pattern grows. But I, what's so fun about it is that you will get a pattern no matter how you set these up. As long as you set up some basic principles, let's say, where the outer and shorter leg is a constant number. I, I, I've never played with that feature of it, but I believe if you did change that as well, like maybe if it went up by once each time, you get a new pattern. But so anyway, so let's, let's work with this. With the Pythagorean theorem, let's first solve our first hypotenuse, AC. Right? So what do we have? Well, we have 1 squared plus 2 squared equals C squared, and that's 1 plus 4 equals C squared, so what? So C equals the square root of 5, right? 1 plus 4 is 5, and that's C squared, so C is the square root of 5. That's our first hypotenuse. Now, in the second triangle, ACD, what's going to happen? Well, now we have 1 squared plus the square root of 5 squared equals AD squared, or in this case, we'll call it C sub 1 squared. I'm just calling it a different C value. I don't, I don't want to confuse it with the first hypotenuse. So that one's not really a calculation, it's just a different way of notating a, the, the next hypotenuse in the sequence. All right, so 1 squared is 1, right? Square root of 5 squared, what's that? Well, that's just, that's just 5, right? Because if you square a square root, that cancels out. Those are inverse operations. And now c sub 1 squared is equal to what? Well, it's equal to 6. So c sub 1 is just equal to the square root of 6. So our next hypotenuse is the square root of 6. So first we have the square root of 5, now we have the square root of 6. Let's keep going and see if this pattern continues. Maybe the hypotenuses will just go up. So it's the square root of 7, and then the square root of 8, and then the square root of 9. Let's see if that pattern holds, or AG would be 3. Let's see if that keeps working. So we have the first two. The next one we have 1 squared plus the square root of 6 squared equals C sub 2 squared. All right, and that's 1 plus 6, that's 7. So now c sub 2 is equal to the square root of 7. So that's working so far. Next one, we have 1 squared plus the square root of 7 squared equals c sub 3 squared. And then c sub 3 equals, well, it equals the square root of 8. So it's holding out so far. And c sub 4, in this case, that's ag, squared is equal to what? 1 squared plus the square root of 8 squared, right? And that's equal to the square root of 9. So c4 is equal to the square root of 9, which is equal to 3. So in this wheel, right, ag equals 3. All right, hope you like that. Thanks.